I'm here with Pastor Michael Nahuka, who is a Destiny a Church Pastor in Hawke's Bay. Kia ora, Michael, and thanks for joining me. Hey, kia ora, Andrew, and it's great to be here. Now, um, we, we chat in today because today is the uh, first anniversary of uh, Cyclone Gabriel, and uh, you as part of uh, your church and the Man Up group did play a role in, in the sort of recovery and, uh, and restoration after the cyclone. Uh, tell me initially, tell me your first, uh, when you first became aware that this was going to be quite a bad situation. Yeah, can't believe it's been a year already. Uh, time flies, but I suppose I, I actually can recall the day I woke up uh, generally pretty early. I'm an early riser, 4 a.m., and uh, I normally pray and you know try and go to the gym. But this day, um, because they had the day before the government had given a orange, I think it was an orange uh, warning or category, I decided to go online and I went on Facebook and I seen a friend, and he lives right in the middle of uh, East Valley. And he was going live, and he was on the roof. Uh, this was around about five five a.m. by that time, and the water had already was already up by the gutter under the eaves of his home. And when I seen that, I knew this was you know this was bad. And so that's when I became uh, first aware of the uh, reality of the situation. And and what did you do? Um, what did you do when you heard that? Well, when I seen it, because uh, he was on his last sort of nine percent, he was. You know, screaming out and crying out and, you know, going live on Facebook. It was on Facebook. But when I seen that, uh, my instincts kicked in. I kind of had my, you know, my trailer half packed up, being a builder. Yeah. And so basically I woke my family up and just told everyone, like, hey, you know, because where we are living, you wouldn't even have known there was a cyclone, apart from a bit of wind and the tree sort of fell down. I got my family together, got all of our... Um, stuff in the trailer, generator, you know, I was packing, I was sort of preparing for the worst, really. Tense everything to go off grid for two weeks if we needed. And um, and then just kept an eye out in that day. And um, I think not long after that, the power went out. And so um, there was the radio. I had my Makita uh, radio and my batteries. So I had that tuned in. And then we just headed over to the um, evacuation center. Uh, which was in Taradau, St. Joe's Moldy Girls College. Okay, and what did you do there? Well, when I got there, because, um, you know, Beth, you didn't know what to ex experience or, to, sorry, you didn't know what to expect on the day. Yeah. You just knew, man, okay, no power, there's no comms, no internet, um, just the radio. And even that was a bit skittish um, because, you know, thinking about it now, they're probably going through the same thing. And so we got there. And lo and behold, there was an easy 300, uh, because they had their gym, there was three, maybe 500, but there was hundreds of elderly people had been evacuated to the place. They were, there was no power, no comms, no one knew what was going on. Um, and so I knew, you know, from there on in, hey, this is, this is a bad situation. And so, uh, yeah, we went there. I kicked into gear. I'm not a person that'll just stand by and watch. Um, I, I spoke to the principal. They were waiting for some help from the civil defence. Uh, but as you can imagine, at that time, you know, uh, the civil defence was was full on. They were busy saving people's lives. And that happened throughout that whole day. And so uh, I basically unloaded my trailer with a generator um, just so people could have, you know, have power and put on a hot um, a boiling a pot or stuff like that, put on a hot, hot cuppa yeah. and try and, um, you know, support everyone, put out my radio. I had eight eight batteries, so that was good for like a couple of days, you know. Yes. And um, I put it in the center on stage and just blasted on all the radio stations just to at least give some people some ease, um, peace of mind. Because as you can imagine, during that time, some people were there. They weren't too sure where their family members were. It was a scary time uh, for everyone. So that's what I did and just wrapped around the school there and helped where I could. Because then in the next few days, obviously, when uh, the devastation, uh, the extent of the devastation unfolded, uh, were you quite shocked when you saw how bad it was? Yes, it was, actually. Because remember, I think the first few days, the bridges were closed. Yeah. And so I reside in the Napier, and uh, most of my church congregation and um, the Man Up, we were all across the region, but we had been scattered. And so everyone was in Hastings. 
Um, and yeah, when we when we did get out and go around, the devastation was terrible. Um, but what I I suppose which was um, quite nostalgic was that over in Hastings, it was just like a normal day, apart from a power outage. Um, not as much damage apart from Omahu, uh, that that got hit. Um, but no, it was quite graphic. It was like um, I, I liken it to Mad Max. Yeah. It's pretty surreal. Yes. Now, um, tell us a bit about what Man Up is, because uh, they they do quite a bit of work, and people hear the name and that, and they're not sure what it is. What what is Man Up? So Man Up is a um, it's a program. We have a catchphrase: uh, raising fathers to save our children, and it's for all men. Um, from all walks of life, from 18 years and over, we do have a youth, or sorry, a, a younger aged um, program that's an equivalent called Youth Nation. Um, but we cover a whole raft of things from drugs and alcohol abuse, substance abuse, domestic violence, mental health, um, to helping men uh, get their manhood back and um, helping them heal their relationships with their partners or their wives and uh, getting them into work. Um, and we just somehow, seem to be working with, um, and I don't like saying it like this, but the hardest in the community or those that have been sort of, uh, that they're, in, they're at the end of their rope. And so uh, that's what we do. It's a 10-week program. It's a, We call it a brotherhood. Um, it's a great program. I've been doing it for many years now, here in the Bay, eight years, and seen hundreds, if not thousands, just in Hawke's Bay, uh, men's lives um, change. You know, recently I was actually at the, uh, they had an event, uh, it was on, it was Sunday, yes. just gone, a cyclone, um, it was for the volunteers, and I was there because we were getting recognition for our work, and um, one of the ladies came over to me, an elderly lady from, um, might, as been, might as well have been from another planet, totally different community to what I'm, well, where I am, and uh, she mentioned to me that her her son, or sorry, her nephew, is like a son, I think her adopted son she mentioned, but anyway, it's a close young man to her, in another city, um, had changed his life, got his children back, come off drugs and alcohol, and she wanted to come up and say thank you. Wow. And so um, that's sort of what we do yeah. uh, in a nutshell. So you, that was quite a resource of people across the regions that you could call Yes. Call on. So how did you put the word out that, that there was help needed? Well, well, when this all went down, and as soon as the, um, you know, because I'm quite resourceful, uh, as soon as the bridges opened, I got on my motorbike and shot straight across over to Hastings and rallied up um, all my community networks over there and um, oops, and uh, pulled them over to Napier. And the first home we went to was the home in uh, Eastdale. This was probably three days in. And I took about maybe 40 people, men and women there, with shovels. We went straight there uh, and helped my friend who they were looking for their grandfather at the time. Uh, through his home but we went there we didn't be a nuisance we're very sensitive and you know understand we just wanted to be there so even if it was to make a cup of tea or just hug them uh, we ended up getting out our shovels and just digging out a pathway for their car to sort of work on their land and stuff like that so we did that and then that's when i knew because uh you know this time the comms weren't really that great the communication this is when i knew man uh we need some help um and so I made a call to Brian Tamaki, Apostle Brian Tamaki, and I said, hey, I don't know what's getting portrayed out there, but we could use 100 men down here just to come down for, you know, a couple of weeks or a week or weekend, and we can get out there and really help our community. So I put that, um, had a chat with him, and then he, he put the call out to the church if anyone could come down. And in the first, within a week, 400 people came. Wow. I was, uh, you know, this was, I was thinking, 100 here we can look after. And then I got a phone call, oh, 400 are coming. I was like, um, where are they going to sleep? You know, because all the mud eyes were full, yes. you know. Um, people were homeless to a, de in a, to a degree. And so um, I rang up and spoke with a good friend, Henari O'Keefe, and said, Henari, we've got 400 people coming to help. We need some help. And so this is my shout-out to the Hastings District Council. We ended up um, sort of... Um, taking over the, the Hastings Sports Centre because that was an evacuation centre for a little while, a period. And uh, we ended up sort of coming on the end of that. And then um, not only did 400 people come, but 1,200. Wow. And so we had 400 keen beavers, not just from our church, 
Uh, Brian Tami he put the call out to the whole of the nation. And so we had all sorts of people from Invercargill, Dunedin, I made some really good friends from as far as up north. There was some trio of, and um, I think there was like gypsy women. And all they wanted to do is come and cook. And so um, the Hastings Sports Centre became our base of operations in a sense. And my role then was to now navigate this uh, 1,200 army of volunteers into our community. And so it was a uh, logistical uh, dream. <laughs> That's the word. Um, but what really came in handy is yes, because I'm from here and my wife and family and community networks, we knew exactly where to send uh, these groups of people. And so we had a whole bus we sent to Tamuil. They had 50 people on that bus, and then you had another 10 cars with them. They just went there with shovels, with whatever, with cup of teas, uh, sent 100 people to Oamahu, another 100 on Waihik. So every day, there was a period of two weeks where these volunteers came down and sort of dedicated their life to helping us. And so it was my role to just navigate that. Um, and we, we did some cool stuff. And that, this photo in the back here, yeah. Uh, this was uh, the Pakofai Hall. We ended up uh, cleaning that out as well and getting that back to um, community use. And there's the guys there. So yes. that's sort of what happened. Yeah. Now, um, over the years, Destiny Church and Man Up have had quite a bit of a bad rap, you know, um, in the media and various things and that. Do you think this um, went some way to show people what you're about? Oh, definitely. I, I don't think um, initially it wasn't my, you know, when you see someone in the ditch, you help, you know, that's what you do. That's the old sort of Kiwi way of life. I grew up like that. My grandparents, we just, if there was someone that had a flat tire on the side of the road, even though my grandfather and, you know, my, my mum or my uncles, we had all of us kids in the car, we'd stop and help, you know. Um, so that, that's all it was. But coming back to your question, yeah, I think it definitely helped. Um, many times in Hastings or Napier, in the last year, I've, if I've, I've had my man-up shirt on, um, someone might buy me a coffee and just say, thank you, you guys helped my my auntie or my mum. And I've had uh, strangers come up and hug me and cry. And so I don't know sometimes if it's a good thing or bad until they share, but I think it definitely has um, helped. Um, yeah, and our church gets a lot of bad rap, but, um, you know, in light of the cyclone, uh, I like to think that that's turned around. Yeah, because... Um... Why were you doing it? Were you doing it to recruit members or were you doing it just because that's the Christian way of doing things? That's right. Uh, the latter. That's the Christian way. I don't even think it's a Christian way. I think it's just, that's what you do. You know, you, 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 the Christian values are love your neighbor as you love yourself. But you, when someone's in need, especially in a cyclone, if you, um, you know, if you can't even just extend a hand of help, you really got to check your own heart, you know? Yeah. What sort of person are you? So um, it was just that, purely that, purely love for my community. Now, yeah, on what do you have to say to those people who suffered, and some are still suffering uh, with properties uh, that are absolutely ruined and that. What do you have to say to them? That's a that's a good question, Andrew. Um, look, yeah, I was actually spending some time with someone the other day. Um, they're still fighting things and going through things mentally. Um, spiritually and obviously um, financially and in their own own situation. But my words would be this. Um, look, we're here. Um, you're not alone. Um, be encouraged. Um, there is a community that, that you know, even if we may be strangers one day, uh, we're still here for you. Uh, the other side of it as well would be this. Um, just continue. Keep going. Don't give up. Uh, it's not the end. I remember the saying. Um, it's... I forgot the saying, but it goes like this uh, along the lines of all things uh, all things work together for your good. That's one of the sayings. But the other one is, um, gee, I'm trying to remember it now. Um, everything works out in the end. Yeah. And if it isn't working out, it's not the end. Uh, That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that would be my, um, and, and my prayers, love and support are with you. Yeah. Michael Nahuka, thank you so much for your time and all the best for today and for the future. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Bless you and uh, all the wonderful mahi you're doing. Hey, again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much.